Hey guys, in this video, I'm actually going to be redoing the text field component that I previously had. And we were using base, the base structure format to actually create this component, but with component properties, we no longer need to do so. So we are going to be creating an even more powerful component here that's gonna have a bunch of different things that I've actually learned over the years. Uh, and let's just get into it. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna keep this original one so you can see the difference in between the new one and the old one. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just generate the structure. So this is our value. I'm gonna say this is gonna be a base regular size. Then we have an icon on the left. I'm just gonna quickly go through this. I'm not gonna pause here because this is pretty basic stuff. You can just resume, just keep on pausing the video to see it. Then we have some spacing in between these, maybe six. Then we have another icon on the right. That's gonna be maybe an X icon. Sorry, I don't know what sort of an icon was that. So duplicate again and then we're gonna use an X icon. So here's the X icon and here you have your uh, input field. So this is gonna be our left content and then we have an auto layout around it. We're gonna give it a fixed height, which is gonna be 40 pixels since that's the size that we're using for our base buttons as well. I'm gonna give this a width as well. Let's just give it a 240 pixel width. I'm gonna give this a stroke as well because obviously we need a stroke neutral 20, sorry, neutral 40 maybe. I think this is fine now. Let's just give it a border radius. That's all good. And I'm gonna add some spacing in between them. Well, no need to add spacing. Just gonna basically move it one to the left and one to the right. Then we have some spacing on the edges, maybe 12 pixels, and that's fine. This is our component created. We're gonna name this text field slash medium because medium is the size. Now. If obviously you go here now, this is our text field component, you wanna change this icon, you wanna hide this and stuff along those lines because that's what we were doing here in our original component. We were hiding the left icon, hiding the right icon in separate variants. Now we don't need to do that with component properties. We can just select the icon, go to the layer, say that I want this left icon, whether it should be true by default or false, I'm gonna say it should be true. Basically it means it should be visible. Similarly, if you go to the left right icon, we're gonna say right icon. And now if you go to the component, the instance here, you can easily go ahead and toggle the left icon and the right icon. One problem that you see here is obviously this goes to the center, so we don't want that. So we're gonna say this is gonna be filled container. Now, when you actually make things filled container, the spacing in between and stuff along those lines removes because that's the right way of doing this particular text field component. So now you can obviously go ahead and update it. You can, if you wanna add the icon, you can add it. That's not gonna mess it up. Now imagine if someone wanted to change this icon, how would they do so? They can double click it and then select the icon, but a much better way is select going to the component itself, choosing the, uh, the com creating a component property for the icon. I'm gonna say this is gonna be for the left icon value. And similarly, we're gonna create it for the right icon. Sorry, I think this should have been the left, not the left icon, this should be the right icon value. So I'm gonna create another one here. Create property, right icon value and then go here and we can call this one the left icon value that should be all good so again create property left icon value so now it should, should be all good as you can see if i want to change the right icon i can directly go here and i can change it if i want to change the left icon i can directly go here and i can change it i can change all of these things directly from the top i don't need to go inside similarly i can do the same thing for the value i can go ahead and i can toggle the content from here i can say this is going to be a text if we go here the text is here, I can just update it. That's all fine and good, but I don't wanna do that. And there's a reason for that. The reason is I wanna make this text field even more powerful. So by default, you have multiple components or variants of a text field, like a placeholder, then you have a value state, then you have a focus state, then you have, have a disabled state. But the problem with focused and disabled and error states is, the error state, focus state, and the, uh, the disabled state all can have all can have a placeholder and they can also have a value. So we would have to duplicate the component multiple times in order to get, let's say if I wanted to do a focus state, I would have to do a focus state with a placeholder and a focus state with a value. I don't wanna do that, that's a lot of work. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna just gonna select this particular component and I'm gonna create a component from this, just pretty simple. I'm gonna say, and where we can make an auto layout and I'm gonna say this is gonna be a text field value and I'm gonna add an underscore at the start of it so it, this particular component doesn't get exported and we're going to say this is going to be on and once i'm done with that i can just click the plus icon and i can say this is going to be off 
basically the difference between on and off is, and let me just show you. First of all, I'm gonna convert both of these to the body text. And then I'm gonna go to the off state and I'm gonna say this is gonna be our neutral 200 maybe. So the only difference here is, I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna change, replace this here. And now if we go here, we can, we can go to this particular text and I can say whether this should be on or off. The on or off indicates whether there's a value inside. So I'm gonna change this to a value. And now we can go to the component itself. We can say that we actually want this particular component to expose its property at the top level, which is the text field value. And we can even change it to just value, just to make it simple, something like this. Now, if we go here, we can define whether this particular text field has a value or whether it's a placeholder. So now when we're gonna create the focus state, disabled state, error state, we can define whether this text inside is a value or a placeholder. So for example, if we have enter your email, something like this, then it's a placeholder. But if someone goes ahead and types an email, asad at asad.com or something along those lines, then we can convert it to a value. So basically just do simple things like that. So now we don't have to create a placeholder state. We don't have to create a value state and stuff along those lines. It's simply done. One other completely unrelated thing that I wanna do is I wanna change the color of these icons. Probably something like neutral 200, just a bit light so that it looks good. Now, if we have a look at this particular component, I think it looks good. Now we just need to create the different states and obviously the sizes. So for the states, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new variant. First of all, I'm gonna say this first one, this first variant was a size. I'm gonna add another variant. I'm gonna say this is gonna be our state. So now in the states, we have a focused state. In the focus state, the only thing that we're going to be changing is the prime, the, the border. So we're gonna say the border is gonna be two pixels and something like this. So now if you go here and you have the state to be focused, you can have a focus state that's that has a placeholder or that has a value. Pretty simple, pretty easy stuff. Also, if you wanna change the value directly at the top, you can obviously double click it and change it by pressing command. But if we wanted to control that at the top as well, we are, what we can do is we can choose both of these values. We can say that the we want to actually expose the content property for, for this particular component. And we're gonna say this is gonna be a text field value, or we can even just say value, that's fine too. Now we can go here and now as you can see, we can define whether the whether it's a value or not and we can define the text as well. Actually, let me just change that to a text because it's getting confusing. So now if we go here, is this a value? Yes, it's a value and the value should be Baba or something along those lines. So all of these things are now being controlled at the top level, which is pretty awesome. Okay, now that that's done, we can obviously create our other states as well, which is gonna be the error state. So now it's the error state time and then for the error state we have danger maybe 200 danger 200 i think that looks good and then for the dis disabled state we just have something simple as danger sorry <laughs> i don't know why i'm saying danger disabled state we just have a fill of neutral 20 or something along those lines so i think now it looks good we can even remove the the stroke if we want and if you're removing the stroke i feel like it should be neutral 30 just a bit dark so it's visible that it's disabled. So this is our component that's done. The states are done. The flexibility is there and it's pretty awesome. One other thing that I would like to even make it more prettier, more awesome. I don't, I feel like the pretty is a really weird word to use, but let's just go ahead and do it. I'm actually gonna add a blinking cursor to this component as well. So here's the blinking cursor. I'm gonna choose a black color here, create a component. I'm gonna say this is our blinking cursor off and then I'm gonna duplicate it. Let me just zoom in so you can see on, off and on. And then I'm gonna basically combine these as variants. And this one was off. So I'm, for first of all, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and select one of them. I'm gonna say after a delay of, let's say 400 milliseconds, it should go to this. And after a delay of 400 milliseconds, it should go back to its original state. So all that's good and we want it to be instant. Now we're just gonna convert it, just hide one of them. I'm gonna reduce the opacity manually. So now in the value, we're gonna say it's gonna be here and in the placeholder, it's gonna be on the left. And we're gonna go ahead, select both of these. First of all, center them and reduce, remove the spacing in between. So now if we have a look at this component, just have a look. Isn't this amazing? If it has a value, it's gonna be here and if this particular component is a placeholder, it's not a value, it's gonna be here, which is pretty, 
pretty great, I think. One other thing that we can do is, since this is an auto layout, and I don't really want it to take the space here, I can convert it into absolute positioning and then just move it one pixel on the left. So now, actually, let me just reopen it. I'm not sure why it's not working. It should work. The blinking wasn't there, which, which is something that I was concerned about. Sometimes it happens when you're using, again, these components. Now it's there on the placeholder. It's there on the value. It all looks really well. So now that this is done, we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate all of these things for our larger sizes. Actually, let, let me just go ahead and place these correctly. So they're there. That's all good. Now let's just increase the size. So we have these four states for the medium size. Let's just go ahead and do the same for a small. I'm gonna say this is small. I'm just gonna press Command Shift Up and that's gonna make it 32, pix 32 pixels in height. You can obviously go here and change that to 32 pixels yourself. Also one mistake I did, I changed the state to small. I don't have to do that. So I'm gonna press Command Z and then I'm gonna make small here and then I'm gonna reduce them in size. That's good. I'm gonna to go to these particular values and I'm gonna change these to small, regular. And you can actually, if you wanted, you can actually create separate values here, but I'm just overriding them because I personally don't wanna to go to, through the struggle of updating them at the top level. The icons, I actually want these icons to be smaller here. So I'm just gonna press K. The size here should maybe be 16, a bit less. I'm gonna press Shift Enter to select the, the container here. And I'm gonna say that the spacing in between these are two, just a bit closer. Again, I'm gonna select the icons here. I'm gonna say this is gonna be 16 as well. So that's all fine and good. And then maybe here, I'm gonna say the edges should, should be eight pixels. The padding on the edges should be eight pixels. So there's our small size component. I'm gonna select all of these mediums again. And then here we have the <clears throat> larger one. So I'm just gonna go and say, this is gonna be our large size. On the large size, I'm gonna just increase the height to 48. Um, actually the padding on the edges looks fine to me, but we can configure that later. The icon sizes can be slightly increased. So these are 20 right now, we can make this 24. I'm gonna go here again, this can also be 24. The spacing in between these icons and the text can be something like this. And this text can actually be overridden to use a larger size. So now if we have a look at this, this is how it looks. I don't know why the icons are messed up in the prototype view. Sometimes it, sometimes it happens. The prototype view messes things up. So you have to close the window and open it again to see what it actually looks like. So now I think this looks good. This is our basic component. Uh, and I think this looks good. One thing that you can actually do if you want to, I don't want to do it in this video. It's gonna necessarily drag this video out. You can actually link these and you can say that if I, let's say, click on this particular input field, then it's gonna convert into an, this particular thing. So uh, imagine you had, I just, I just did that. So imagine you have a, an element like this here at the bottom. If I click on it, it's gonna convert itself to a focus state. So that's there. Uh, now, one important thing that I'd like to highlight, we obviously don't want the blinking cursor in the case of normal, in the, in the case of obviously uh, the default state, the error state, the value, the, the disabled state. We only want it in the case of the focused state, if I'm not mistaken. I know I'm not, but I just wanted to say that. So what we can do is actually we can go ahead and we can define whether this should be visible or not. So I'm going to go here. This is the blinking cursor that I created and I'm going to go here, go here, blinking cursor. I can choose the layer panel and I can say the blinking cursor uh, visible, uh, whether it's visible or not. I'm going to say it's not going to be visible. So I'm basically going to say that it's not going to be visible by default. Then I'm going to go here. In this particular instance, I'm going to say it's going to be visible here. It's going to be visible here and it's going to be visible here. One important thing I'd like to highlight though is if you actually want it, so let's, let's just have a look at it. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna place it here. This is our focus state. And obviously we have to reopen it because as I mentioned, sometimes it just doesn't show the interactions if you actually change them recently. So here's our component. If I now change, a, change this particular thing to a placeholder, as you can see, it looks something like this. Obviously you have to reset it 
in order to see it correctly, but the blinking cursor should be preserved here. But now if I go to something else, if I go and change the state to error state, I can define whether this should be visible or not. And that should be no problem at all. I can just tweak it or I can reset it. I can reset everything and it's gonna know whether the blinking cursor should be there or not. So that's completely up to us. I'm basically just defining whether the blinking cursor should be visible or not. By default, it's not gonna be visible, but there you go. So this is pretty much the component that's done. Um, you can do a bunch of tweaks yourself. One thing that we can actually do as well, quite easily. So imagine if I wanted to add another type of a component here. I'm gonna say I wanna add another type of a variant. So the style, so whether this should be uh, boxed, so these are the box styles, or I can press enter and I can select all of them, all of them, and I can say the style should be underlined. So I just did this underlined, and now the only thing that I have to do is I need to remove the left padding, I need to remove the right padding, I need to remove the stroke, I don't even have to remove it. I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna say the stroke should be at the bottom, and the border radius should be zero, and there you go. You basically have the same component now as a rounded, as, as, a, as an outlined or a boxed thing. And then you have another component at the same basically variants being duplicated for a text field that has a border bottom. So that's pretty much it. That was the video. And now just to put the final touches, uh, you can actually see that even though I've created this text field that's much more complex, it just has 24 variants. This one had 48 variants. Imagine that. So once you're done with everything and you actually want it in a presentable manner, you can go to the plugins, you can open the PropStar plugin and you can say create embedded table or you can also create a standalone table. If you create an embedded table, it's gonna show all, it's gonna automatically update all of the possibilities for this particular component. So now, as you can see, it has updated all of the possibilities that exist for that particular component. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move all of these things a bit to the left, something like this, obviously the text field at the top needs to be there and we can just expand it and there you go that's pretty much what this video was about let me know if you found it interesting let me know if you learned something new and yeah that's going to be pretty much it one other thing that i wanted to point out is we did if we wanted we can we would have actually removed this and we can we could have just placed this blinking cursor right at the edge of this particular component even in the focus state specifically but just in case, just in case, because even in the error state, you can imagine a scenario where you may need like the blinking cursor and stuff along those lines. So it's okay to include it in the in this uh, value component as well. So that's pretty much it. That was the video. Do let me know if, it, if you found it helpful. Definitely do subscribe and hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.